Welcome to the DataBits channel, where we attempt to find stuff you've never seen before. And that's kind of difficult because there's a lot of stuff out there. But today, hopefully, we found two things you've never seen before, one of which is a JVC VCR. The other is an LG DVD player, both of which are really cool, and I can't wait to show both of them to you. This multi-system VCR you see here is an HRV200. And when I find multi-system VCRs in the wild, typically they're trashed. And this is the first one I found that actually worked. And I paid $15 for it, which was kind of high for a thrift store. But, uh, you know, $6, $9 is the typical price I'll pay for most of the cool VCRs that I find. There are some exceptions. This is definitely one of them. So this multi-system VCR plays all kinds of formats from all around the world. And it was really nice of JVC to cover those particular analog video formats right here on the front of this VCR. See here we have PAL, we have CCAM, we have two NTSC formats, both 3.58 and 4.43. They also mentioned B slash G as well as D slash K and I. And it also mentions long play recording. So this machine can also play and record in both PAL and NTSC, apparently. What does this thing do? What's so special about it? What's special about it is the fact that I can put recordings made from the United States as well as recordings from the UK, and I believe France is also in there. I can take recordings from those countries and play them in this VCR. Now, what's kind of a bummer is it only outputs in PAL. Well, I am in the United States. My TV doesn't play PAL. So how do we convert PAL to NTSC? Well, we've got a solution for that as well. But before we go there, let's see what's inside this VCR and makes it tick. With the hood of our VCR removed, you're gonna notice something right away. Pretty much the lack of anything. I mean, there is really nothing in here. There is a power supply section there. We have a chassis here, the, the main mechanism in the, in the center. And then over here to the left, we've got a, like an RF converter box and some jacks, and that's it. So apparently whatever this thing does, it does it with magic. Or there is a gigantic circuit board underneath this chassis. So maybe it's all done on a chip or something. I don't know, it's not really sure. But we do have the capability of putting in a tape and seeing what it does. So let's go ahead and do that now. Something that inspired me to buy this VCR is the fact that I own two VHS releases that are foreign to me, one of which I know is PAL, the other one I'm not sure of. One of them is Star Wars, the other one is Who Framed Roger Rabbit. And this is the Who Framed Roger Rabbit tape. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in now. And just to let you see how the machine grabs it and cues it up. And it does a pretty good job of getting the tape in at a relatively fast amount of time. One of the features it has is an auto head cleaner, which I'm never really a fan of. The auto head cleaner is a tiny sponge and you see it right here. That little sponge as part of the loading mechanism just kind of pops in, rubs against the head for a little bit and sort of get some of the residue off of it, which is kind of a nice idea. But a lot of times, by the time you get these VCRs, these little sponges have completely rotted. Now this one's in pretty good shape. It's not falling apart when I touch it, but I have seen those that are literally just crumbling and that crumbling is not gonna be good for your video head. So I would recommend you remove it. Now, most of the time, these do just lift out. You can just grab a hold of whatever is uh, sitting right here, like this one has like a little stem here. I can probably just grab a hold of that with a pair of pliers and yank that out, kind of like a tooth. It's like, you know, just think of it as a tooth remover for your VCR. Yes, you become a dentist. One of the features I would gladly trade for the auto head cleaner is hi-fi stereo sound. And as you can see here by the jack panel, it only has mono and linear mono at that. So we have an audio in and out and we have our analog video in and out via composite, as well as these RF connectors here, which I would imagine those come from the UK. We don't use these kind of connectors here in the United States. And the other cool thing is this machine supports 110 volts to 240 volts 
50 and 60 hertz, 14 watts, it does so automatically. By the way, the full model number of this machine is HR-V200AG. Turning on the VCR, as connected to my RCA television here, shows us a language selector of English and PYCCKNN. I'm really not sure what that second one means, but uh, let's just go with English for now. And then it wants us to set the clock, and I'm just going to kind of exit out of that. So what displays on the screen is kind of a funky, snowish looking background, and it shows PR1 on the screen. And I'm pretty sure it's, you know, I, I did the research on it. PR means pregnant robot. So you can select which pregnant robot you want to tune into. PR, yep, seen there? So I can go ahead and set it at PR1 for now, just because that seems the most logical for this one. And then uh, let's go into the menu. So here's our main menu. Now notice everything is in black and white at this point. Kind of interesting. And I can go ahead and do my function set. So function set gives us these great options. So we have best, B-E-S-T, and I can turn that off or on. I can also exit out of it. So offer on, go down here to picture control. I can do normal or edit. Actually, I've got normal soft and edit there. So next one down is PAL and MEC cam. And I can do auto or I can just say, I want it to be on this particular version every time I put a tape in. And uh, auto seems to be a good spot. Our NTSC is both of those, or we can just say convert NTSC to PAL. Okay, so there you go. Those are our settings. We have an auto timer. We have an OSD on screen display and uh, auto SP to LP timer as well. So what does it look like when we hit play on a tape? Does it look crazy? Well, it kind of does. Let's take a look. All right, so here's what Who Framed Roger Rabbit looks like with this PAL VCR connected to my NTSC system television. Looks kind of icky, black and whitey, kind of yucky. So what I did is I looked online, I looked on Amazon, and I said, is there a way to cheaply convert PAL to NTSC? Well, apparently there is. Let me show you the little gadget I found. And here she is, and very affordably so, is the Mini TV System Converter. It has uh, inputs for both audio and video, composite on both sides. On the bottom, you have a switch to convert PAL or convert NTSC, as well as a USB power source, which is required. It does not come with a power supply. You get to provide it, but they do give you a cable at least to do the providing. So it's a very simple little gadget and it does a pretty good job. Let me show you what kind of job it does. And here's what she looks like all connected. And by the way, these audio and video cables were provided with this mini TV system converter. So I have the uh, audio and video running out of the VCR. Now, obviously I don't need this red plug, but uh, it is provided for me. So I've gone ahead and connected it. As far as the output goes, I have that running into my little DVR here, my little DVD recorder and DVR. And then I'm supplying myself some power right out of the front of my Pioneer receiver. So there's your connectivity. Now let's see, what does it look like? So now with my groovy converter box, I can convert this to that. And now let's see what our video looks like. So you can see there, we've got rich colors and uh, it doesn't look so incredible or anything, but it's definitely watchable. If we didn't have this converter, we would be watching a signal that looked like this. Now, as far as the settings go, what we have it set on in order to do this within our system, if I hit the menu button here, now we have a pink indicator on our function set and here's the settings I'm using right now. So let me pan up just a hair. There we go. So we have uh, function set. Our best is on. Picture control is soft. PAL me C cam is auto. NTSC to PAL and so forth. 
So yeah, it looks pretty good. Let's uh, take another peek. And there's a little bit of a line on the screen and that really isn't the system. Uh, it's the difference in scanning of my camera to the TV. Not too long ago, in the early 2000s, two major electronics companies began fighting for space on top of our television sets. Those companies were Sony and Toshiba. Both of those companies wanted to introduce the successor to the DVD format. They wanted to introduce a high-definition disc format. Sony, of course, brought forth Blu-ray. Toshiba brought forth HD DVD. Now we all know who the winner was. The winner was Blu-ray. But a company called LG decided, let's make a machine that can play both. Let's play Blu-ray and HD DVD. Now, as you know, those two disc formats don't play in compatibility with each other. You can't take a Blu-ray disc player and put an HD DVD disc in it and vice versa. So this machine did the impossible. This machine actually plays both. Blu-ray, and HD DVD discs. This is the LG Super Multi Blue Player. Why is it called blue? Because the laser that reads both of those discs formats is blue and very, very thin. DVD was read with a red laser. So this particular machine will also play DVDs. So what did it take to pull that off, to get two formats under one hood? Well, let's take a look and see. The LG Super Blue BH100 has a very impressive array of jacks on the back with all the major video formats supported. You had composite, component, and HDMI with 1080p output. For audio, you had optical, coaxial, and a distinct or discrete 5.1 channel output here. So you didn't need a decoder to listen to all five channels. This machine was manufactured in December of 2005. What a fun gift this would have been for Christmas in 2005. What we find under the hood of this machine is essentially a computer. On the left of your screen, you'll see the motherboard. In the center, the BD-ROM drive. And then on the far right, the power supply. So all the basic features of a computer are right here. We have a heat sink, probably covering a CPU. We have some RAM chips, some processing chips for audio and for video. It's a bunch of capacitors right there. And look at the connector that connects the BD-ROM drive. It is in fact a SATA connector. You can see it right there. And then over here is our power supply which still looks pretty healthy. Our exciting light up controls are powered by these wires that run to a panel right underneath the lid. Another set of wires runs across over here to complement the rest of the buttons with control here. We even have a cooling fan to keep our power supply nice and chill. Our LG BD-ROM drive even has its own model number bottle HL-01P, and it's newer than the machine itself, having been manufactured in November of 2006. Rounding up our close-ups, you can see the makes and models of these particular chips on the inside. This heatsink, probably for the CPU, is really hot to the touch. I'm surprised there isn't a fan just on this. Notice our fan for the power supply is way over there on the other side. So I would imagine not much air is getting over here onto this side. The next thing I wanted to do was remove the BD-ROM drive from the machine. And as you can see, I've done that here. It doesn't really show us a whole lot more of what's going on on this motherboard here, but you can see some more of what looks like RAM chips. So there's four of them there, and there's also four of them right there as well. So uh, 
quite a bit of memory in this thing perhaps, right? So the next step was to test playback. What could we play on this machine? Does it still play BD and HD DVD? Let's find out. With many unsuccessful attempts to get it to play anything other than DVDs, it was time to take a second look at this BD-ROM drive and see what's going on with it. So I took it out and look at the front of this thing. It is actually just like a standard computer BD-ROM drive. In fact, it's really just a DVD-ROM drive. You can see DVD minus R DL right there. You can see DVD multi recorder and compact disc rewritable high speed. It doesn't say anywhere on the, on the front of it that it's actually a Blu-ray reader at all. But apparently it is the correct ROM drive because it does say, it actually says Blue Lay BD disc driver right there. Blue Lay, that's really funny. I didn't notice that before. All right, so uh, it's a pretty cool thing. So what if we were to connect it to a computer? So I went ahead and ran the power cable right out of the thing and kept it plugged in and then connected a SATA cable to this little adapter that I have here. This happens to read both IDE and SATA drives. So I connected that, got my power connected up, and then what happens if we hook it up to the computer? So I've got my laptop here. And interestingly enough, my computer does recognize this as a disk drive, but it really only sees it as a CD-ROM drive. So perhaps the problem isn't with the drive, it's with the actual LG machine, right? So let's go ahead and eject the drawer here, and let's put in a Blu-ray disc and see if we can read it now that it's connected to the computer. It's got a button on the front, just like a uh, normal computer drive would have. The struggle, my friends, is real. This BD-ROM drive is apparently reduced to just a DVD-ROM drive. My very first Blu-ray disc player, which was made by Memorex of all companies, within one year was unable to read Blu-ray discs. I could only use it as a DVD player. This appears to be the same thing. So what if we could use it as a DVD-ROM drive, maybe as a DVD recorder? Well, first off, let's put in a DVD, same one that we put in earlier, and see what my computer recognizes it as. And there it is, CD drive fosters disk two. Let's look at the properties on this drive. My computer sees it as an HLDT-ST BD-ROM BDH199 USB device. That's pretty cool. So can I put a blank disk in here and use it as a burner? 
It says on the front it's a burner. Let's insert a Sony blank DVD minus R disc and see what happens. How about a blank DVD RAM disc? Or a Memorex DVD rewritable disc? A music CD? It appears as though our super multi blue player is pretty well not super. The only thing it will read is DVDs. And these particular emblems don't mean anything. Oh well. And so concludes this video about VHS from all over the world and the Super Blue Multiplayer bringing Blu-ray and HD DVD at one point together under one roof. Well guys, thank you for watching. Please subscribe. Share this video with at least 327 people. Please leave some comments below. Click that like button and I will see you guys next time when I run across something else cool to share.